Hello. In this video tutorial, we will be looking at derivation practice. Practice for the AP Physics 1 and AP Physics C exam. Please make sure and pause the video and rewind it as needed. <clears throat> We're continuing here with problem number five. Please remember to uh, list any and all potential concepts before you begin a question. Let's begin by looking at the example picture and reading the prompt. It says that a sphere of mass M is attached to a light rod of length L, which is attached to a central pivot so that it can freely swing in a vertical circle. The rod is held so that it is in a nearly vertical with the sphere on top and released. Derive an expression for the magnitude of the force on the rod, of, uh, the force of the rod on the sphere at the sphere's lowest point in terms of L, M, and fundamental constants. Well, I see uh, essentially two potential concepts that are described in this question. As the sphere makes its way from top to bottom, we have uh, conservation of energy. I abbreviate conservation of energy as COE. And that would be um, from the top to the bottom. But since we're looking for the magnitude of the force at the bottom of the swing, well, that would also be Newton's second law, specifically centripetal forces. So why are we looking at centripetal force? Well, because as the sphere swings through the lowest point, it's moving and arcing in a circle. So it's not just sitting still at the lowest point, it's moving in a circle at the lowest point. So those are gonna be the two concepts that we're going to be doing. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that velocity is that one variable, that one concept that always seems to link every other concept. Velocity is what links everything. So let's go ahead and develop an expression for the conservation of energy part, okay? Start at the top. Energy at the top. Well, the potential energy we have would be MGH. Now take a look at the picture. The H that it falls from is actually L plus L, which is 2L. So we can take this and go M times G times 2L or 2 MGL. The kinetic energy at the top is zero. because we're releasing it from rest. The energy at the bottom well, we're going to let potential energy at the bottom be zero. Why? The bottom is the lowest point that the sphere is going to get. I know the ground here is the lowest point of the problem, but the sphere is not going to get that low. So it doesn't make sense to choose a a a zero potential energy point any lower than that. So we'll go ahead. Remember, you get to arbitrarily select your zero potential energy. You have to. So I'm going to arbitrarily select it to be at the bottom of the swing. Now you do have kinetic energy down there. So you're going to write kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. Well, your equation would be 2mgl equals one half mv squared. So we'll start there. Energy top equals energy bottom, that would be energy initial equals energy final, or two MGL equals one half MV squared. Now remember, what are we solving for? We're solving for V. V is always the linking variable between two concepts. So solve for V. To do that, you have to multiply both sides by two. You can see the mass will cancel. And then finally, you have to square root. So V is going to be equal to the square root of 4, 2 times 2 is 4, G, L. Okay, that is our speed at the bottom of the swing right here. Now we can proceed with the centripetal force problem. Okay, Newton's second law centripetal force, the equation for that would be net force equals MAC. 
which is mv squared divided by r. Now you can rewrite the net force as well as causing force minus opposing force equals mv squared over r. Now causing forces always point into a circle, opposing forces always point out of a circle. So at the moment, we need to actually take a look. When you're doing a Newton's law problem, you need a free body diagram of what's going on. So let's draw one real quick. Got the rod, you got the sphere at the bottom. Well, the forces acting on this thing would be the force of the rod on the sphere, we'll call that F rod, and the weight of the sphere itself, Mg. Well, you can see, F rod is going to be your force pointing in, Mg is going to be your force pointing out. Therefore, we have uh, F rod uh, minus Mg equals Mv squared over R. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute for V squared, okay? And I'm going to do that by taking this expression and squaring it. So if V is equal to the square root of 4GL, that means V squared is equal to 4GL. So we will be substituting that right there for V squared. Oh, and you'll also be substituting R for L because the radius is L the length. So we're gonna do a couple of bits of substitution there. So F rod minus MG equals M times 4GL over L. You'll notice one of those L's cancel and you could actually rearrange this just a little bit and you get the force of the rod on the sphere minus its weight, MG, the sphere's weight, equals, if I rearrange that, it's 4MG. Solve for F rod. We're gonna add MG to both sides. And the force of the rod on the sphere, which is what you're looking for, is 4mg plus mg, which is 5mg. So it tells us if the lengths were increased, would the magnitude of the force of the sphere increase, decrease, or stay the same? Well, if you increase the length, the whole system would, uh, you can see that F is directly proportional to mass and it's directly proportional to G, but force is independent of L. Therefore, changing the length L will not change the force. The force stays the same. Well, if the mass of the sphere is triple to 3m, by what factor would the upward force change? Well, we already established that force is proportional to mass. So force is proportional to mass and you triple the mass, that means force is proportional to uh, what? Three? What does that mean? By tripling the mass, the force is tripled. 